Chris Lane is the president of Buffalo General Medical Center and the Gates Vascular Institute. His staff has been on the front line of fighting COVID-19 for the past six weeks. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Mike. If we can, let's start. Take us back uh, about six to eight weeks ago and um, with the planning preparing, we had heard about the coronavirus, but tell, tell us how some of the planning in the early stages with uh, the emergency preparedness team and, and that group, how all that helped as you look look back now today. Sure, so so when you, you go backwards, uh, middle, mid-March we saw our first coronavirus patient, but in fact, we were planning for that weeks and weeks and months ahead of that. And, and, and our emergency preparedness team is fantastic in preparing for really anything that's gonna come at us. Uh, we never in, anticipated a pandemic like this, but the team has really been preparing weeks and weeks ahead of this to make sure we have enough supplies and enough equipment and, and people are prepared for what's gonna be coming at us for the days and the weeks and the months to come. So you've been at it now for some time. Tell us how the staff has responded uh, both initially and throughout the last two months. I, I truly cannot say enough about what they've done each and every day caring for these patients uh, with the unknown coming at them each day as well. So when you look at the 2020 nursing week, the motto is compassion, expertise, and trust. And our nurses and staff have embodied that every single day. I couldn't be more proud. Uh, and our community is so much better for the great work they do each and every day. So Buffalo General and the Gates Vascular Institute, obviously known as centers of excellence for things like cardiac and stroke, uh, surgery, but uh, tell us how the intensive care unit team um, has jumped to the forefront here and some of the work that they have done over the past couple of weeks. It's amazing. Um, when you look at the results they're getting in the intensive care unit right now, uh, it is absolutely amazing. So with Dr. Campbell and Dr. Nadler and their entire team and the nursing staff up there, they're taking the most sick of the sick patients and, and getting these folks to a point where many of them can go home afterwards. And we're seeing such great results and re remarkable results that um, I couldn't be more proud. Um, and I think this community is healthier because of that and the work they're doing each and every day to get these patients back into the community and functioning to a really high level. How has the coronavirus in dealing with this changed your daily routine or, or your work as a leader in the organization? So, so, you know, my day, I've had folks ask me, what do you do on a day in and day out basis? And my job is to really make sure the great people here and the expertise that they have, they have the tools to succeed in what they need and the, and the equipment, the tools, provide them that, those to, to do what they do best and that's care for patients. So we're making sure that the frontline staff has enough equipment, has enough staff, has enough resources to do what they do best and really get out of their way and let them do what they are really skilled to do, and that's care for these patients. So I know that there's uh, volumes that are off, and obviously there's been a financial challenge, and we'll get to that, but if you can, tell us how uh, the singular focus around COVID-19 has actually helped from a team building perspective and uh, from a collaborative perspective across your, your site. Yeah, there's really no silos. Everybody is focused on one thing and that's that patient at that point in time. Uh, it's, it's kind of strange, you don't see families around because we've, we've limited any visitation and that's been limited throughout the state. So really the focus is on that one patient at that one point in time. So it doesn't matter if you're in the emergency department or in environmental services or in the surgery area, everyone is focused on one thing and that's getting that patient better. Um, you don't see any silos, everything is broken down. You mentioned restricted visitation. Can you tell us some of the other safety measures they put in place uh, to help not only protect patients, but employees? I know employee safety has been a huge sure. initiative for the organization. Yeah, I was just speaking to a, to a staff member about it today. Uh, it's real, you're safer coming into the hospital than you are going into a convenience store, or going into a supermarket. Um, the protective equipment they have, so everybody's masked before they come into the building and they're tested from a temperature standpoint. If they, anybody has any symptoms or signs of COVID or any sort of illness, they're gonna be immediately sent to employee health uh, or to their physician to get checked out. So we've put measures in place where we wanna keep our staff just as safe as our patients. So, but the hospital is a little bit quieter these days. You mentioned there's not as many families here visiting. There's not as much traffic in the hallways. What has this uh, pandemic done from a business perspective to Buffalo General? So, you know, Buffalo General is one of the busiest hospitals in the region. And 
um, from a from a business standpoint, it has truly crippled us. Uh, when you look at how many surgeries we do on a daily basis, we'll do upwards of 60 or 70 surgeries on a daily basis here. And those are really intensive surgeries, be it stroke or cardiac. Uh, we're down to about 10 a day. And when you look at the emergency room, we'd see about 180 to 200 patients a day. We're about 100 a day. So um, people are rightfully staying home, but when they need the care, they need to come in and they need to come in quickly. And, and we're hoping people continue to do that. Um, hopefully we can get our, our surgical uh, arena back up and running in the not too distant future because our community needs us to do that. So when you talk about the uh, surgery piece, uh, talk a little bit if you can on the elective surgeries. Uh, there's an awful lot of hardship that's uh, in the community right now the past six to eight weeks for folks who have had to put off some of those procedures. Why is that so important to get that type of work up and running again? Well, I mean, I think the patients who are waiting for that have been waiting a long time. So if you look at a, a patient requiring a total knee procedure, that patient may have waited six or eight or 12 months to get that procedure done. And now it's being pushed out even further. And that patient could be in severe pain. Same for spinal procedures or cardiac procedures. Um, these folks need to get these procedures done. We need to get back up and working and get these physicians doing what they do best. And that's caring for these folks. So We'd like to get this up and running as quickly as possible. We obviously defer to our, our officials and the government to make sure we're doing that at the right time. Um, but I think we're getting really close to being able to provide that great service to the community. So Chris, as we wrap up, uh, you take a look back. We've been at this about 60 days now. Um, I want you to tell us a little bit about the community support and what you have seen and witnessed uh, in terms of the uh, feedback and the, the support the organization has received, whether it's for the frontline workers, whether it's feeding them, whether it's helping out from the foundation perspective, first responders, tell us a little bit about that. It's amazing. Um, each and every day, something new comes at us from our community. For instance, last night, the mayor led a, a group of firefighters and policemen around the community to surround the hospital and drive through the hospital and thank Thank everybody for all the great work they're doing. Uh, that is just a small, a really small token of their appreciation, but each and every day we're seeing food delivered from the foundation, our local community of organizers bringing food in for the staff. Um, the outpouring has been more than I've ever imagined, and, and Buffalo truly is the city of good neighbors, and we are so fortunate to be part of that. Um, and it's so great to see that the folks in the community really have put our nurses and caregivers on a pedestal and understanding they truly are the heroes of our society and we are so really fortunate to have them among us. So Chris, last question, do you have a message uh, for your workforce um, these days as, as, we, as we try to you know, crush COVID and battle the coronavirus together? What, what, what message do you have for those who work at Buffalo General or the Gates Vascular Institute? I, I truly, and I say it each and every day, I can't say thank you enough. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your compassion and empathy. And thank you for all you do each and every day. Because without you, our community would not be where we are today. And that's much, much stronger than we were six to eight weeks ago. So thank you for all you do each and every day. You were truly my hero. My mother was a registered nurse. So I have a really soft spot in my heart for nurses. And the nurses we have here, are the best in the country and the world for that matter. So thank you for all you do. Chris Lane, the son of a nurse, the leader of Buffalo General Medical Center, leading a team of staff, nurses, physicians on the front line fighting coronavirus. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for all you do.